Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're gonna to be doing a full furniture makeover featuring a new product. What new product? Well, we're gonna be trying Retikit's all-in-one paint. You all know I love a good all-in-one paint. And in this video, I'm not only going to brush it, but I'm gonna spray it. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the star of the show today. We are going to be making over this three drawer dresser. Now, it's pretty rough. It needs a lot of work. So I have my work cut out for me in the prep department. I will go ahead and go over that with you guys as I usually do, um, but we'll do it in a fast forward motion so we can get to the good part, which is the paint. Now, Retikit also sent me some brushes, so I'm excited to try these out. What we are going to be doing today is brushing part of the piece and spraying part of the piece so that I can see how this comes out both ways. All right, so I wanna show you up really close what this piece looked like, because from far away, you don't see all these imperfections. Lots of dents, dings, gouges, um, heavy scratches. So I'm gonna bust out my orbital sander. It is solid wood, so I'm not worried about using such an aggressive sander for this process. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these out and get this ready for our next step. Okay, so I just wanna stipulate. Normally, this is not part of the process that I have to do before painting. This paint, I want to put a big disclaimer in there, does not require you to sand the piece in order to paint it. This piece is really beat up, so it had so many dents and dings, and I will not paint over that. So I wanted to sand them out smooth. So I'm not sanding the surfaces in order for the paint to adhere or anything like that. I am getting it ready so that it will look its absolute best without all of the dents and dinks. We're at that point now, so now I'm gonna go ahead and blow it off, I'm gonna clean it, and then we're gonna go ahead, and I am going to prime these spots. Normally, I recommend anytime you take the finish from original to a bare wood, you want to go ahead and put a primer of sorts on there to be able to give it a nice, smooth, even finish like the rest of the finish, so you don't see those inconsistencies. Sometimes when you paint over bare wood, that paint soaks right into the wood grain and it will have an effect where it looks different than if you were to paint over this finish. So let's go ahead, get it cleaned up, and then we'll go ahead and paint. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and blow this off with some compressed air, and then I'm gonna move on to my next step, which is to prep this. I'm using uh, TSP alternative, you can use crud cutter, whatever prep you prefer. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and spot prime. I'll show you what primer I'm gonna use, but I'm doing this because I have sanded down several spots to bare wood, and you will see a difference even with an all-in-one. So I wanna go ahead and just give it an extra layer of primer on there. And did you notice all those clothes that the person left in there? That happens all the time. Here's the primer I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna quick spot prime those areas that are raw wood, and then we're gonna move on to giving it a quick scuff sand, and then we're gonna be ready, finally, for paint. Sometimes spray can primer can be a little bit rough or have texture to it. So right now I'm taking a fine grit sanding pad. I'll put this in my show notes. These I love, I get them off Amazon and it'll just create a really buttery smooth finish ready for my paint. Okay, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and pick up fresh. Yesterday I stopped filming because it was getting dark outside and it just would have been a huge disservice to you if the lighting isn't good. So we've got a fresh day, fresh lighting. Well, let's go ahead and get the brush portion started. Now Retikit was kind enough to send me a few brushes. So I think I'm gonna choose this one here to start with. And this is their Chalk Painters Choice two inch professional brush. It's a elite nylon and polyester blend. So it's a synthetic brush, which is great because synthetic brushes won't shed like natural bristle brushes. Um, this says it's specifically designed for painting furniture and cabinets, provides a sm smooth and clean finish with less brush strokes. So let's give it a try. One of the things that I really like about Retikit is on their packaging, they put really great information. They tell you step-by-step -step instructions where to go get them. They give you their 800 number right there on the packaging. I love that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this open. We're gonna stir it up. I have my little stir stick here. I always recommend stirring. You can shake paint if you want to, but that can cause air bubbles. So I personally like to give it a good stir. 
Okay, I'm kind of laughing because as I'm taking the lid off, I'm looking down at it and it says to shake well. So if you wanna shake, go ahead and shake. I personally like to stir, that way I don't cause any additional air bubbles in the product. But um, I've got my little stir stick here. Let me show you the consistency just so that you guys can see. So it is a little bit on the thicker side and that's not unusual for an all-in-one paint. Um, I'm not going to thin this when I'm brushing, I may use my water mister bottle to help it glide. If I notice that I'm having a hard time working with it, sometimes when you're working with a thicker paint, they may drag. I don't know. Let's just go ahead and get started with this and see. When I spray, I definitely will be thinning this because this is far too thick to go through my sprayer and give us a good finish. But let's go ahead with the brushing and get started. So this is what the brush looks like, which I think is gonna be really good because we have a lot of grooves in here to be able to go ahead and get into. So I think this brush is gonna do really, really well. I like to give my brush just a little dampening. So that is what I'm gonna go ahead and do. And then we are going to go in with this paint. I'm really excited about this color because it's, it's a color that I have been painting a lot lately. It's a beautiful grayish beige. So I'm gonna start just by getting in, perfect brush for this, just to get in these grooves and get a really nice finish in there. Um, just so you guys can see, see, it's pretty thick. I can even feel it when I'm putting it on that it's pretty thick. I can tell right away it's going to have great coverage though. I'm not gonna lie to you, I see lots of brush stroking going on here. So we'll see how this pans out when it dries down. Um, it was pretty easy to put on. Okay, so this is the first coat dried down. I'd say it's been about 45 minutes. I went in for lunch and had a couple things to do on the computer. So, and we're having beautiful weather today. I would say normally you're gonna wanna recoat one to two hours. Um, but that's gonna depend on your climate. I have to say, it's very, very smooth. I, I feel no texture at all. What you see here, this is just a coverage thing. This actually doesn't feel at all ridgy or brush stroke at all. So even though I was a little thrown with the brush just because I'm not used to it, I actually feel like this came out really, really good. So we'll go ahead and do the second coat. I was thinking of switching up and using the other brush they gave me just to test that out too. So this is the other brush they sent me. So I figured let's go ahead and give this one a try too. So here we are at the end of coat two. We'll go ahead and let this dry down. We'll come back and take a look at it and see how well it dries down. I was impressed with the first coat. It dried down really smooth and very well. So it looks like our coverage with the second coat is gonna pretty much be it, but we'll see. Okay, so here we are at the end of coat two being dry. The only place I really see there's two little spots. This area here, I need to recoat. That was my fault, user error there, if you will, because I was using that really large brush and I didn't want to get cross direction there going on this area. So it was being more delicate towards that top area. So I'm gonna go ahead and recoat that, but everywhere else, it looks pretty darn good. And I am impressed. So that happens with light colors. Sometimes in certain spots, they need a little third coat in just certain areas. So let me give you my honest opinion if this is a brush stroke free finish or not. Um, you can use great tools, great products, 
and you can have a great technique. And the bottom line is you're still doing it in a natural way using a brush. So you may have some brush strokes in there. When I look at this, I have to get so close to see an actual brush stroke, but I do see them, but it's because I brushed it. So if you're looking for that more natural finish, a brush is the way to go. If you're looking for a perfect manufactured look, then spraying is gonna be the way to go. Now there are ways you can alleviate brush strokes even more. You can use the water mister bottle like I talked about. You can sand in between coats, but just keep in mind, don't be too hard on yourself when using a brush, if you see brush strokes, because you are brushing. All right, time to get to the spray segment. I've got my filter, I'm gonna put my paint in, and then I'm going to dilute it a little bit. I do have videos that talk about diluting and using a viscosity cup. I'm not gonna do that here. I pretty much eyeball it because I've been doing it a long time so I know exactly how much to put in. I'm showing you right there how thick this paint is and you can see it's really not even draining through the filter. So I'm gonna give it a little assistance to get it through. But you can see why if you're spraying this paint, you do wanna go ahead and dilute it because there's no way that's gonna push through your sprayer. Okay, so here's our first coat sprayed. Is it beautiful? Not at all, but you guys know the drill. It's never gonna be beautiful on that first round out. It's just not. Our second coat, it will really start to take shape. And I went ahead and I sprayed the front here too. So no big deal. Our second coat is going to come together and make this look beautiful. Okay, so question that I get asked all the time, why do I paint with the drawers in? Well, when they're flush mount drawers like these, it's super easy to paint with them in and why not? So I'll show you the next step in what I do because I get asked this all the time. Do you paint the inside of the frame? Yes. So what I'm gonna do now that I have my first coat on everywhere, I'm gonna pull the drawers out, I'm gonna paint the edges, the sides and the top, and then I'm gonna go ahead and once they're dry, I'm gonna pull these all the way out and I'm gonna paint inside the frame on the inside, just so it looks nice and clean when you open and close the drawers. So as you can see, I got the top of the drawer done. There is no overspray on the inside of that drawer. And let's come over here. I got the side of the drawer done and there is no overspray there. So using that cardboard trick works super well. Now, when these are dry, I'm gonna remove the drawers and I'm going to go ahead and get that side in there all done. Okay, so the second coat is all on. I'm gonna let that dry. Today, our temperature is about 71. So it's unusually warm right now for this time of year, which is fantastic for painting. So this should dry relatively quick. I'm gonna dump it on its back after taking those drawers out so that I can go ahead and get inside the frame here and then underneath as well. Um, one thing I will say, and I'm sure you already know I'm gonna say it, I like the way it sprays. I like the way it sprays better than brushing, but I'm a spray girl, so yeah, I really love the way it sprays. But I will tell you, for those of you that brush, it went on really, really beautiful. I did not touch this side spraying. So in the end, I will show you the sprayed versus the brushed. I brushed that side, I sprayed that side, and I sprayed the fronts. So as soon as this is dry, I can't wait to show you guys.
Okay, so I wanna talk about the brushes that I used for just a minute. These weren't my normal brushes that I used. Ratikit was kind enough to send me these brushes, so I wanted to try them out. This one I really liked. First of all, let me just say how nicely they clean up. I just cleaned these with a little bit of uh, brush soap and water, and they're like immaculate. Anyway, this one I really liked. For doing an overall paint job, I would use something similar to this. This one wasn't bad. I just had a harder time. It's very large and I had a harder time manipulating it. They did send me a smaller one that I didn't use. But what I will say about this one is, look at how thin and fine of a point that you can get. So this is good for crevices, small details, like those lines I was painting. Perfect. So this will come in handy. I just didn't care for it to paint the entire piece, even though it's larger. I really liked this one. So this is the one that I would recommend if you were gonna go ahead and order this Retikit, um, any of their paint, whether it's their chalk paint or their um, all-in-one like I'm using here. This is a really good brush at a really good price point. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get on with the next segment of the video, which is taking care of the top. I don't actually know yet what I wanna do with the top. I'm gonna sand it first and then see where that takes me. Um, and yes, I sand and stain after I paint. I get a lot of questions about that. And here's what I'm gonna tell you, it's the way I do it. You can do it any way you prefer, but I have a HEPA dust collection system. I'll show you here in just a minute what that looks like. It's connected to my sander and the dust is extremely minimal. So I'm not really worried about it ruining my freshly painted um, surface, especially if my freshly painted surface is all dry, which it is because we are on the next day here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my sanding. I'm using, for today's video, my Mercaderos 5.0 Orbital Sander. Love this thing. It is a workhorse of a sander. I will start with 100 grit. I'll move up to 120 and then 150. If I feel like it needs to be finer than 150, then I will go ahead and do 180. I'm obviously gonna be staining this with some sort of stain. I just don't know what yet. So let's just see where it takes us. So you guys can see, this is what I'm talking about. This is my Festool CT MIDI. It is a HEPA dust collection system. It is amazing. It is a tool I cannot live without. And I've had this for quite a long time. Now you might be wondering, cause I have had people ask, it looks brand new. I take really good care of my tools, especially when they're an investment and I spend a lot of money on them. So yes, it actually does still look pretty brand new, but believe me when I tell you, I use this thing almost daily. All right, let's talk sanding for just a moment. So as you can see, I started with my 100 grit, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm not trying to get the entire piece stain ready with one grit of sandpaper. You don't want to do that for multiple reasons. First of all, your most aggressive grit should be taking off the finish. And then you want to move up in grits to go ahead and continue to remove the finish, smooth out your finish, and get it ready for stain. Now, anytime you use a stain that's water-based, it may raise the grain, especially in certain wood species. This is pine and it does have a tendency to get the grain raised, which will make it feel a little rougher. So we try to get it as smooth as possible, but not too smooth. And we say for stain purposes, you wanna stop at 180 grit. Anything smoother than that may change how you're staining parts to the wood evenly, and then you've got that issue. So we're gonna do 100 grit, which we're done with now, 120, 150, and possibly 180 if it's not smooth enough. 
The other cool part about having, and I'm gonna show you guys, I haven't done anything, I just stopped. Um, the other cool part about having that HEPA dust collection system is not just the fact that it doesn't make a lot of dust everywhere, but as soon as I stop my sander and start my sander, the machine stops and starts, so it's pretty cool. So this is our finish here. This is with 100 grit. As you can see, I got a lot of finish left behind. This is nowhere near stain ready. So we're gonna go ahead now with our next grit of sandpaper and keep removing the finish and ensuring that we smooth out the top and have it be stain ready. The other thing that you wanna do, the reason why you wanna move through the grits of sandpaper like I'm doing is to avoid any swirl marks. You are using an orbital sander, which is swirling. Too much pressure can cause swirl marks. So you wanna let the sander do the work and you also wanna move up through your grits to be able to go ahead and sand any of those out that do happen to get in there. And just so you can see, look at the minimal amount of dust. First of all, that's not, that's not dust, that's overspray from my paint job, but the dust is so minimal. You can hardly see, and I haven't done anything. I have not wiped this down or anything. So no dust is on the piece itself anywhere. So you can see why painting before and doing my sanding after is not an issue with this. Here I want to show you that if you do not have a fancy sander, the orbital won't cut it when you've got to do the sides like this. You can do it by hand, and I'm doing it by hand. I literally just take my 100 grit sandpaper, fold it in half, and I'm going to town sanding it. As you can see, the finish comes right off. A little bit more work than using a sander, but it works. Okay, so after all that sanding, I have decided that I am not staining this. And why am I not staining this? Because it's not pretty. Um, this is a pine wood veneer, and if you look closely, there's a lot of imperfections in the finish. It's not a really pretty grain finish. Um, it's got a lot of inconsistencies in the look, and I didn't burn through anywhere, but it's just, it's just not one that's going to look good with stain. There's some areas like right here, and again, it's just, for me, it's not going to give me the finish I want. So what we're gonna go ahead and go with today is a paint wash. So let's go ahead and get that started. So I had a moment to think about it and now I know exactly what I wanna do. Unfortunately, I don't have any other reticate paint products to use. I only had what we used as the base color. So I am gonna be switching up and using a different brand for the top. Uh, we are gonna be using Fusion Mineral Paint. I'll show you the colors that I'm gonna use. And instead of doing a wash, what I'm gonna do is do a blended paint mix with um, my water mister bottle. What that will allow me to do is not over or under thin the paint out. So when you do a wash, obviously the more water you put into your paint, the sheer, more sheer it's going to be. At this point, I don't exactly know how sheer I want it to be. So this gives me a little more control. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you my process. Okay, so here we are. I am going to stop at that. I love the way it looks. I love the fact that you see the wood grain underneath, but it did hide the imperfections and inconsistency in the way that it looked. And it still gives us a really beautiful effect. So that is done, my friends. We'll go ahead and top coat that top 
Not for a while though, I'm gonna go ahead and let this really dry for about one to two hours and then I'll go ahead and top coat it. So this is the first coat of the top coat on. It's hard to see the sheen, but it is just, there you can see it. It's a satin sheen, it's really beautiful. How many coats will I do? I will put on two more for a total of three. Okay, so let's go ahead and read a little bit about what is on the packaging and don't mind me, I've gotta put my cheaters on because the wards are tiny. So let's just see what it says here. Retiquet Ultra Teak is a chalky smooth paint that includes primer and top coat in one, just like I said. Um, it is an acrylic paint. Um, there is no need to wax or poly. Um, it goes beyond zero VOCs to offer zero emissions, making it safe for you and your family as well as the environment, which that's awesome. We like that. Um, and then it says this will cover, this is a pint um, and it will cover approximately 100 square feet per quart. So you gotta do the math there. Um, application is for interior use, no sanding or priming required. Use the product when surface temp is above 50. That is with pretty much any paint. And yes, I sanded this, but I told you guys in the very beginning of the video, that was not because I was painting. It was because this piece was heavily damaged with dense dings and heavy scratches and gouges. So I needed to get those out. So I really liked working with this paint. It is a very similar to paint to some of the other ones that I use. Love the finish. It was easy to spray and it was easy to brush. Hey everyone, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Wasn't that fun to see a full furniture makeover done, brushing and spraying? I love doing that. Thank you so much for being subscribers. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please do so by hitting that subscribe button as well as the post notification bell so that you're notified when all of my latest videos are released. Plus, it allows you to be a part of my YouTube community, help support my channel, and keep me going. Thank you again and I'll catch you on the next video.